So today I'm working on this thing. The other day I went to start it to go to work and it would not start. It was cranking over just fine, but I couldn't hear the fuel pump engaging and it wasn't backfiring or anything as I tried to start it. So that would indicate that it's not getting fuel for whatever reason. I checked the um, fuses and there was no problem with the fuses. Went to try to start it this morning, it started right up. So that tells me that the fuel pump is probably working intermittently, which tells me also that it's probably getting ready to go out. So rather than pay for a fuel pump and a tow bill, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and change the fuel pump. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the filler neck by removing these bolts right here. There's three bolts here. That's holding the filler neck in, four bolts rather, I'm sorry. Remove those that's holding the filler neck on. And then what I'm gonna work on next is loosening up the bed of the truck. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the dump truck method by lifting up this front area of the bed. That way I can access underneath the bed for the fuel pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. I'll show you where the bolts are located. You're also gonna to wanna to pop off the plastic piece here and the plastic piece here as well. Because this whole piece is gonna come out at once. You want that to be able to separate and come off of there. That way this thing doesn't break. Mine's already most of the way broken. I don't want to finish breaking it. So pop those plastic pieces off as well. Remove your four screws. So once you have that filler neck loosened up in the front, the next step is to remove your bed bolts so that you can tilt it, tilt the bed forward. This is the, further, the furthest most bolt. I'm not going to take that one all the way out. I'm just going to loosen it up enough to allow it to tip up. So you've got that one there. Here's your leaf spring, as you can see. Sorry for the wobbliness and all that of the uh, picture here. That's your second bolt in the rear. There's two bolts in the rear, two bolts in the front on each side, making eight bolts total. You're going to remove the six in the front the first, all four of them up by the front of the bed, the two right here that I'm pointing at, and then just loosen the two that are furthest in the back. That way when you tip your bed up, it doesn't end up sliding off this mount, and then you've got your bed laying on the ground all mangled up and screwed up and stuff. You don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those six bolts, loosen these two, move on to the next step. So after you have removed those six bolts and loosened the two all the way in the back, the next thing you're going to do is come up with some sort of system to lift your bed up and out of the way. The way I've seen this achieved by other people is you take a jack, roll it up under the center of the bed, and use a length of wood or something like that to place on the jack and between the jack and the bed, and then start jacking it up. I don't know how well you can see this here, but there's a lot of stuff down in the way like the muffler right there, the drive shaft, and then the gas tank. So you've got to kind of position the wood between that. That's why I'm just going to use a little one by one here. This bed isn't particularly too heavy, so I think that should be quite sufficient to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and try this setup right here, see what we got. Now the length of this wood is going to vary based off how high or low your truck is. My truck is pretty low. I think it's got a three inch drop and a four inch drop in the rear, or a three inch in the front, four inch in the rear, so it's pretty low. So we'll see how this works out. I'm just trying to base it off the line here, which is a little bit lower than where the bottom of the bed is at. So I'm going to give it a shot, see what we have. So actually, as you can see, this is working pretty well, that little setup. First try, too. I'm pretty surprised by this. You can see where I've got the wood in there and where I've got the jack positioned. And uh, as I'm pumping up the jack, it's just lifting the bed up and out of the way, giving me lots of access to the, uh, well that's kind of catching over there a little bit, so I've got to kind of make sure that's not catching on the bed. But you get the drift. Once this is up in the air, you might want to place some jack stands right between this area here so that this thing doesn't fall down on you. I mean, obviously you don't want to have your hand up in there or something like I just had my hand. If it slips off that piece of wood or something, that would be very bad. Would probably mean a trip to the emergency room and price of stitches, which would be probably more expensive than just paying somebody to do the job. So be very mindful of that. So as you, as you can see, I have the truck bed raised up, but I don't quite have enough room to get access to the daggone fuel pump yet. 
So my solution to this, the problem was with this stick, as I was jacking it up, this piece of my jack was contacting the um, fuel tank and the uh, drive shaft as well. So I could only jack it up a few inches, then it would hit that and I wouldn't be able to go up any higher. So what I did was I kind of braced it in place with a couple blocks of wood. And I'm going to try to move everything back over to the center beam here and try to get a few more inches out of it because I need to get more clearance here to try to get to that fuel pump. The next issue I'm having, it's starting to rain. Fun Florida weather. <laughs> but I'm going to continue to try to work until it actually rains. So after a couple of times of bracing it, moving the wood around, stuff like that, this is what I have. And I think I've actually got a pretty good amount of space to work here. I'm just going to try to work from underneath the wheel well. But I'm quite certain now that I'll be able to get that pump out of there. So that's what I'm going to start working on at this moment. I'm going to go underneath the hood and hit the purge valve to release the pressure in the fuel line. And then I'm going to go ahead and start pulling those off. This is that purge valve that I was referring to just in case you didn't know what it was. It's like a little, it's like a Schrader valve on a bicycle, essentially. All you're, all you're going to want to do is take like a little screwdriver or something in there, push that little center pin in. And, but be careful because gas is going to shoot out. So don't have that pointing like towards your face or towards your paint or anything like that. Maybe even put a rag over top of it to, you know, kind of stop it from spewing out all over the place. But what you're doing is just relieving the pressure in the line because those lines are pressurized. So once again, I just wanted to state the importance of making sure that you have this bed braced in place before you start doing any work under here. As you can see, I have like a piece of wood that runs all the way down to the ground, comes up and goes to the center beam here. It's quite sturdy. It's kind of wedged in between the drive shaft and the fuel tank, so it's not going anywhere. Um, please make sure that you have that before you start doing any work here. The next item of my business is actually getting this fuel pump out of the fuel tank. So as you can see, I've got the connectors off already. It's pretty simple. This one, all you have to do is pull this little piece here, pull it out. The other one's the same thing, except it has a piece on top holding it in, so pull that top piece, slide it out. Removing the fuel lines are pretty easy as well. This one was here in the middle. You just squeeze it in, and that forces those two prongs on the outside to go outward, slide it off. The other two had uh, little white pieces. Let me see if I can show you better. Had little pieces here, you see that? Squeeze those in, and it'll just slide right off. Then, you've got to get your snap ring off. Use a pair of snap ring pliers, that will make your life so much easier. Get it into position, this is kind of hard to do with one hand. Get your pliers into position, and then you're actually going to pull them inward. Ah, it's really difficult to do with one hand. <laughs> Two, I already had it off, it was very easy. Let's see how, how it does that, and then just pop it out. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that one-handed, but you get the idea. Just squeeze it in, and then pull the snap ring right out. 